All right, ladies and gents, we are looking at some carnage. Out plowing, luckily it just had gotten finished. And, uh, oops, sorry for any. Look at that. It made a rupture. And, uh, happened on a client's driveway. Uh, <clears throat> luckily it didn't create too much of a mess. I was able to shovel it out. I had already done the driveway. I did have to shovel the rest of the, what I had back dragged, but. So as you can see guys, these lines are just old and worn out. Um, these uh, both disconnect, uh, quick disconnects have been leaking. There's the other side here. This has been leaking, just the quick disconnect. So we got quick disconnect, excuse me. We've got a, um, Uh, brand new lines from Western. We've got brand new uh, quick disconnects. This is another pack I gotta open up. This is some special goop for the uh, to seal these uh, high high pressure threads. Got from my dad. And then we also got an awesome license plate friend that I got from my brother. So there I am in the uh, frame. Wink at you. <laughs> Anyways, um, we're excited about putting this together. I'm probably not gonna film this. I'll, it'll depend on what I wanna do or... Um, I'll just point out what I'm gonna do, guys. I'm going to remove this male quick disconnect from here. Um, I'm gonna connect the uh, female new one to the new line off camera, so I'll just literally connect that line to there and I'm just gonna duplicate each connection one at a time because as you can see they're kind of uh, staggered like uh, this one's coming out and in up there this one's coming out down here so I'm gonna just duplicate that I'm just gonna assume that's the right way to do it I'm gonna probably look at a diagram that I have just to make sure but we just want, I just got the phone with my brother. We talked for about an hour. He's doing good up there. Shout out to Fortress. And uh, yeah, we're just gonna repair this line. This has been a massacre. There's blood everywhere. All right, let's get this done. All right, here we are. We got the uh, lower fitting on this right side cylinder cleaned up. Applied the uh, special loop installed the male fitting there. I had already installed the female fitting to the, the new uh, hydraulic line. Got uh, this glare here. There you go. Got some goop on that end. And then we are rock and rolling and fully installed up top here. And I wanted to give you an idea of how the old system looked. We gotta do uh, the male nipple and the female baboid. We gotta connect that one to the new line over on the bench. And then as you can see, go on down here to where it actually blew. Um, we'll clean up those threads internally and make sure we get a good seal but uh very cool we're excited about getting some new lines on this thing um next we're probably gonna put some whips on it so right now there's nothing at all we'll get some uh cheap ones probably on amazon or something the cheapest one they had at the place i went to today that were 32 dollars for both so it's just not necessary and then here is what's going on here. I got some goop set out. This is gonna, uh, I'm gonna goop this, cinch it down, and then take this over to get her installed. So I gotta get back to it. Next video will be the complete setup, and then I'll just uh, refill the reservoir here on this. Um, is automatic 
Mark 3A, which is the technical um, term for this cable driven uh, Western setup. Alright, we are plugged in and locked and loaded with our um, upper and lower, left and right, whatever you want to call it, quick disconnect lines. Down here was the original breakage. We have a fresh line. We got a cleaned out threads. Get some goop on there to seal it. And uh, again, brand new quick disconnects. We did that, of course, because the old ones were also leaking. Down at that joint, there was a kind of a slow seepage, but there you have it. I'm gonna let this sit overnight. I just, and I just accidentally uh, stopped the video. Um, I'm gonna leave this overnight, and then what we're gonna do is simply uh, fill this basically to the bottom of the threads, and then we're just gonna check the operation of it, set it down, let everything relax, and just make sure the fluid is, you know, all it needs is about that much to, to go. So, but you just want to make sure that all the air is worked out of the cylinders, get everything worked out, you know. I don't know the specific uh, strategy, but I always just like to leave this thing um, undone enough to kind of wiggle it around a little bit, get the fluid in there. But ultimately, if you start moving this thing up and down with that, with that off, you're likely to just shove fluid out because it's a, an easy place to go. So I believe the manual says with everything down and off, you fill it to the bottom of the threads and that's it. So, but you want to recheck it after a while once you've got everything moved around. Make sure at the rest position it is good to go. So anyway, there it is, the new lines. Whew. Took forever, mainly because I was distracted doing some other things, but man, that thing looked good. There it is. I like the blue and the lines, cool. All right, over now. Okay, back at it the next day. I got the exact um, what to do for this. So what I'm doing is I'm actually draining it. Drain the fluid in a little plug that you could just take right out, Allen head. And let this drip for a while. The fluid didn't look that bad, but I'll put some fresh ATF in there. And uh, this thing might actually take a, a certain type of fluid, but I think ATF works just fine. I don't know the fluid type for sure. Um, and then um, what you do is you gotta have the lift cylinder all the way down. And then you fill it up to, like I said, the bottom of the thread. So not overflowing, but the threads go down about, you know, yay. So you just want that amount. Then it'll mix in and then we'll double check it again. But, so we're gonna let this drip and then fill it back up. All right, well, ladies and gents, um, plow lifts up great. It angles um, this way, which would be to the right. So this lift ram is working great. But for some reason, this right side, which actually angles the blade this way, is just not working. So I've got either no fluid pressure at the beginning of the line, at the end of the line, through the clip disconnect. I have to verify that I've got fluid pressure there, which I'll probably spin off the quick disconnect, which sucks. I'm gonna try one thing. <clears throat> First thing I'm going to try is I'm going to have my wife come out and operate it to the left and I'm going to push down this fitting because the quick disconnect may be faulty. I do not think that's the issue. I'm pretty much past the point of air bubbles in this system. I've done this three or four times, lifting up, going back and forth, dropping the lift ram down, filling fluid. It's, it's been over full at, at times, meaning there's pressure in the case. So it's almost like it's, put it, it's putting pressure down, it's not getting through. I don't know though, because when I disconnect the fitting, I've got fluid there. So I have to make sure 
what I'll probably do is I'll probably take, I'm probably gonna go ahead and uh, unscrew, well, let me see here. Oops, I'm gonna get it I don't like how, I'm thinking this quick disconnect sucks. Like, I don't know, but those check balls have just little bits to travel. So as you can see, you know, well, I think it's a pressure issue, guys. So, gotta verify what's going on. I may put on a set of the old couplers. I don't know. Ah, I wish this would just work. <laughs> this is not what I want to be doing right now. But anyways, gotta figure it out. We'll, we'll uh, update you in a sec.